Okay, well done, Natty. Natty, oh, all right. Um, Lucio, uh, maybe I'll just let you introduce yourself, but I, I told him last week, I think an entrepreneur is coming who knows digital marketing really well, and our understanding is you'll talk for about 20, then we'll do Q&A, and Terry will chip in with a bit of his experience, a few things you may not have covered, and then we'll finish up at about 5.40. Students will have a break and at six we'll do their normal lesson. So thank you, Lucio, for coming along today. A highly regarded guest speaker. So I'll just hand over to Lucio now and mute myself. All right. Thanks for having me. So I was, I was lecturing up to the last semester. I was lecturing at GCAM. So that's good to know that I have been kicked, fully kicked out yet. It's good to know that I'm still... <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah. I'm still You're sat in the room. That's a really good start. Good stuff. I know. All right. Who am I? And why I'm here? So my name is Lucio Ribeiro. That's my email. That's my LinkedIn. I have run my own digital market agency working for the likes of Mercedes-Benz, Unilever, Mobilis, Cabri, um, AGL, some other big clients. And I managed all their digital marketing, um, data insights, digital transformation, and artificial intelligence. I've, um, I'm currently consulting in digital transformation, AI, and digital marketing with my own company called Lucio AI, just because I couldn't be bothered finding a better name. And uh, I'm also a lecturer of uh, artificial intelligence at RMIT um, online and digital marketing at RMIT. I'm a former lecturer uh, of data and insights at Deacon on the marketing course. I'm founder of a few companies, but the current ones I have money on, it's a company called TikTok. It's specialized in TikTok because I do believe that's one of the emerging uh, platforms. And I know there's a whole lot of privacy stuff going around. That's not my role to talk about this today. I'm also founder of Lucio AI, which is my own consultancy. My background is in, I'm a lawyer back in Brazil. That's my accent. Um, I have done an introduction to psychology because I'm a big believer of market-centric marketing, really consumer and prospects and people's orientated marketing. And the AO game theory is Stanford and artificial intelligence and MIT. On the side, what I do is I'm very interested in, in, in the art of resilience and I'm a big student of uh, ancient philosophy like Stoicism and uh, Buddhism. I'm a Buddhist myself. And I do a lot of public speaking on marketing innovation, but also <clears throat> in resilience with um, anxiety and depression and how we apply ancient philosophy on there. So that's the wrap up about me. Feel free to follow me on LinkedIn, to befriend me, to send me mails. I'm more than welcome um, all, these, all these invitations coming to LinkedIn. So, uh, oh, look at that. My thoughts, I have the same clothes. So that's just a coincidence. Anyway, so first things, I've been, I've been asked by the team to be talking about the skills of a modern and, the, um, and skills of the future for marketer. And I like to, to think that they pretty much are the same they always been. They hasn't really changed. What has changed is uh, pretty much the, the the tools or the technology that we use around there. And um, I put this, this presentation um, and I use all my skills based in uh, what I've been seeing the last 10 years, based on conversations I've been having, based on the clients, um, based on the, I have supported a lot of my clients in, in recruiting for roles like head of digital and CMO and, um, head of marketing, I have helped a lot of my clients to be um, recruiting for those roles. And I noticed there is, uh, there's a lot of commonality and um, there, are few, there are a few things that absolutely they are, they are now new, they were in, back in the time, like uh, understanding of digital, understanding of artificial intelligence. This is a, a, a new thing, of course. But Pretty much the, the skills, the, the mindset, the, the aspirations are the same. I listed here some of the, the things that I believe they are absolutely um, mandatory for um, anyone looking for entry jobs to mid-level managers to senior leaders. 
These are the skills that I believe that it's a merger of technical skills, soft and hard skills. They all come together to form this really modern, this really efficient um, um, marketer who knows how to work on the efficacy game, but also knows how to be efficient on, efficient on the tools. So I thought this would be a good start for you. And if I go through, um, we do have about, I would say another 15 minutes to go through these um, 11 skills. And there's 11 uh, um, items that you should be thinking about it on your career. And this is not just about building up a career like a professional uh, a, a trader. It's also about you if you think about I've been both sides. I've been I've been I had my salary paid by someone else when I worked for someone else, and I also had the salary paid by myself when I built my own my my own agency. When I sold my agency two years ago, we were about fifty people. We we're turning about ten million dollars revenue with some good clients. So I've seen the both both sides, and I believe this is applicable for for um, an entrepreneur as much as it's applicable for someone who is working in a corporate and getting salary from a corporate. So I listed all of them. Feel free to take a print screen. Feel free to uh, uh, to download this. But I'd like to talk to you one by one now. So the first one is um, curiosity, and I think this is um, this is a, a really soft skills that get a lot of confused. So a really good a really good marketer, a really good marketer, a really skillful marketer, marketer. Sorry, it's always going to be asking questions, you know, about why and about how and about what. It's it, this is curiosity. I, I used to say this is the street smart, you know. It's this insatiable, insatiable appetite for, for learning and adapting. And um, I've seen this as an entry point. I could pretty much dictate. I look back when I started my agency and I employed some of these younger um, in, uh, staff. And, and regardless of the background, the, the, the gender, regardless, there was this thing that I could smell working with them after a few months. And I just knew those who had curiosity, they would go, they would go further. And it's almost like this uh, uh, observational psych uh, psychological experiment that I look now 10 years after I have employed them for the first time. And those who had this uh, sense of big curiosity, they now work in a big roles so and they, are, they have really progressed. Not the other ones haven't. Perhaps it's just a little causation here. There's no really, it's a correlation. There's no causation. But it's this, it's this curiosity that drives, you know. Um, I see people applying and working, let's say, for, um, I don't know, a company like Meyer, and I just pick Meyer out of my, my, my mind. Could be anyone. And people who never really spend even one day working at the floor and seeing customers and talking to the customer and understanding customers, people who don't have that, that, that groundwork of street smart. So I start with curiosity. And how you do anything is how to do everything. And if you go the extra mile, if you go the extra question about why we're doing these things, not in a cocky way, but in a very constructive way, that's the very first thing that makes a modern marketer. We've got to be questioning. Second one is a really good marketer is the marketer is the one that gets the big picture. You know, it's not just the one. I think we are in marketing as a general, one of the ways, one of the reasons we are seeing um, CMOs uh, losing their jobs more often than the CFOs, for example, is because we are too passionate about it, our own bullshit, to be honest. And sorry for the, the direct word, but if you, you are grown up, so you can take that. But we got too much uh, uh, taking with our own bullshit of metrics, of click-throughs, and Facebook, and newness, and all this sort of stuff. And we we kind of losing control of the other piece that really matters. And uh, we got to super highly focus on promotion. And we think that every marketing problem, every uh, business problem is solved with promotion. Let's do a Facebook campaign. It's the, it's the, it's the tactics ahead of the strategy, you know? And you can see the really good marketers. They put all the 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 the, the, uh, um, the 
the pillars of, of, of marketing, they focus, they work with price. You see a situation like coronavirus right now, we got a lot of business out of, out of business because of the lack of preparation for one of the pieces of placement, you know, distribution. There was no plan B for, for this situation. And the, why, why, why you not work on your direct-to-consumer, DTC, why you're not thinking that? The best, the best solution I've seen um, throughout this coronavirus for the whole, you might remember the whole craziness about toilet papers, right? People buying stock in toilet papers. And I thought, I think it was in England, then I saw the marketing team solve the problem. Here in Australia, we tried to solve the problem with communication, with promotion, again, telling people to not buy. Well, in UK, these uh, supermarkets, what they've done is they, they changed the price, they model the price, and that was really good for controlling. So what they've done is you could buy one toilet paper for, let's say, five bucks. But if you want the second pack of toilet paper, you had to pay 50 bucks. And that's fine, you can take two if you want. And there was enough to solve the problem. So I think the second big characteristic of a market, about the market is to understand the big picture, to talk about the four P's, not just the promotion, the, the P of promotion. The third one is the break rules. It really, it, it, the good marketer looks outside the category for inspiration, you know, and understands very much the, 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 the difference between the power of utilizing distinctiveness or differentiation. They're not the same. They're not the same. And I think what I see now is a lot of marketers really focus on differentiation talking about cheaper, better, faster, all the errors on the differentiation, which is important. But distinctness, it's way more important. And if you just look which your category, if you're selling cars, if you're BMW, and all you look is inside your category, what Mercedes-Benz is doing, what Lexus is doing, what Audi is doing, you just talk about differentiation. You, you forget about distinctness. How can I be distinct in this whole market so I'm memorable? And the only way you do this is to look outside the category. So a really good market, a modern market of break rules, or at least moves closer to the limit of breaking that pretty strongly. So the fourth one is it makes look simple. It, 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 a good marketer, it is a good seller. You know, whether you're introvert or extrovert, it doesn't really matter. You need to know how to sell. You need to be able to, to work on this magical ability of summarize the principles that you're trying to communicate in this very concise, relevant and commercial viable uh, way. Since I started my career, I've been, I've been trained, and I'm still not amazing in making it look at simple, but I still continue, like my proposals for my, my um, uh, prospects now are one page. That's all. What all the ages are saying, 30, 40 pages of a deck, my proposal for my clients are one page. If I cannot make it one page, it's a proposal I'm failing. Today I had to write an email to the CMO of one of the largest telecoms in Australia. And my, and my email was about five sentences. And I really was in a rush. So I used a famous Winston Church phrase to say, I'm sorry for the long email, but I didn't have time to write a short one. And I truly believe that we make that look it simple. And the way we make it look simple is you learn how to use dashboards. You learn how to tell stories that it can be summarized in visuals. So that's a really big skill. So they'll be a, they'll be worth for you to take that short course in masterclass or Coursera about arts. You know what I mean? Why not? So just look what Steve Jobs was able to do just study, studying phones. All right, we are number four. We have another um, another how many to go? We have another uh, seven, another four. Seven to go. I need a, a, a five seconds break just to take some air. Yeah, yeah, don't worry, no thanks. Um, students, you're really lucky to have someone like this with such a wonderful worldwide experience. I thought Lucio was Italian, and then later I thought studies in Brazil, I totally missed it. So uh, he's, he's not Italian after all from Brazil. I beg your pardon? Oh, I thought you were an Italian speaker. Lucio, no, 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 
Not Italian. I'm Brazilian. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Then later I saw the qualification. I thought I didn't know. And then later you mentioned it. No, excellent stuff. No, it's a lot of, a lot of goodies. Uh, you, you've got the track record. You've got a great industry track record and great insights. The students are lucky to have you. So thank you. Oh, thank you. And, and, uh, and you know, like in neuroscience, in neuroscience, the 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 key, uh, uh, Michael. And you know that you're you're a professor for a long time. The key the key to teach is, I do, we do, you do. And every time that I do, I get encoding that in my brain, in my own memory. So I'm also very lucky to be able to come here and and talk to your students. So hopefully this is. This is a both way street that we're both learning. Yeah, you know, I'd like to talk to you sometime because I know a lot of big companies and um, there could be some opportunities. I'll, I'll later work out your exact skill. I mean, you've got a lot, but anyway. Anyway, I won't interrupt. Continue on. Well done. Thank you. So, Tim, hopefully you're still with me here. Um, short break. Let's go back. So, summarizing, we had 11 skills. That's according to me. <laughs> we spoke about four of them, and now we're going to go to the next three. These three are very interesting. They're all connected. They're all connected. And this is one that I really want you to pay attention to. And I know these online webinars, they can get quite hard to fully pay attention. But this is a moment of truth here for you. There'll be another moment of truth in the next slide. But if you can just be with me for five seconds, because this is really relevant. This is probably one of the biggest ones on this deck. Is this short-term doer and long-term thinker. It's this ability to build campaigns that generate money right now, puts money through the door right now, but also these programs that build, build brand equity that will guarantee that you have a, a long-lasting business. So it's, it's a good marketer understands the balance between building brand and selling right here, right now. You know, there's this, there's this thing in, in this current modern marketing because of uh, primarily on the promotional perspective, because of the rises of Facebook and, and the, the digital economy, this clear indication of a, a big tension that exists between short-term response, activity, and long-term brand building, you know? And the way in which long-term effects um, um, are generated is fundamentally different from how most short-term effects are produced, you know? It's um, although long term long term effects always produce some some short term effects. The reverse is not true. You know, long term effects are not simply a, an accumulation of short term effects. It doesn't work that way. You know, a succession of short term response folks campaign, including the, the promotional ones like the ones you do on Facebook and, 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 and Google will not succeed as strongly over the long term as a single brand building uh, a campaign designed to achieve year-on-year -year improvement of business success. So you got to have this ability to manage short-term delivery so you can have conversations with your CFO, you can have conversations with the financial team and take the pressure, but also this ability of long-term thinker on how you build a brand. And I think like McDonald's is a great example of doing this extremely well. They are they find they found this really well between the short term and the long term thinking. There's a lot of to learn about that. And I could talk the whole day about it, but we are on time, so I'm gonna move on. Number six is this technical and digital fluency. You there's no it, this is a non-negotiable, you know, you gotta have literacy in AI and elements of, of uh, uh, tech dish. Like you need to have literacy at least in AI, cybersecurity, and digital platforms like Adobe, Salesforce, um, I don't know, some of those, those uh, big ones, right? This is a non-negotiable. 
you don't need to be an expert. You don't need to necessarily, unless you want to be a head of digital, you want to grow expertise around that. But there is no non-negotiable. This is going to be almost like asking now if you know how to use the internet. Like it's, it's just accepted, right? So I strongly suggest that you get, um, and that's a, that's a commonality that I put across all my students. I strongly suggest that you go through short-term courses that you can do in a, maybe in a month or a couple of months. And then you can take some, uh, um, some longer term certifications or even diplomas if you, if you, if you desire, right? But um, the word here is literacy. It's not expertise, all right? So number seven, um, that's very tight. It's very connected to, um, to, the, to the point I was making before, the number four of making it look simple. It's, it's, it's storytelling. You need to learn how to sell how to galvanize people uh, around your projects and around your ambitions. If you're not able to galvanize people, you're not going to be able to make similar roles. It's simple like that. You need to be able to galvanize people around your mission. You need to be able to convince people to see a way. And there are plenty of techniques uh, online that you can learn there. Uh, learning how to pitch, learn how to do presentations. This is just a must have. You're gonna need to learn some of these skills. So we we now walking towards to the end, and um, I still have a short video that I wanted to explore with you if I do have time. But we have another two slides. We have these three, four less skills, and I do have a very short video around applications of artificial intelligence in marketing. That uh, Mark, if you have time, I'll show. If I don't, I'll leave behind. So, number eight is capability builder. So normally, normally you you're gonna be if you apply for a job, or if you're building a consultancy, or if you're working in an advertising agency, you always always fulfilling either. So if someone is giving you money, it's hiring you to do a job. You either you either fulfilling a capacity gap or a cap or a capability gap. And a capability means I don't or team internally don't have that skills. And capacity is we do have those skills, but we don't have the time, or we don't have the inclination, or that problem is too small for us to solve, right? So the very first thing is you need to understand, am I fulfilling capability or capacity? It's because the team has too many marketers and they're just growing too fast. They need someone else to come in and do the second the same or someone to come in and do something different they don't have. So uh, 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 people are buying capability or buying capacity. And absolutely, as a general sense, the most powerful is when you fulfill capabilities. But to fulfill capabilities, you need to have these skills. So the capability builder is like this technology uh, fluency and digital expertise, you know. It's a marketer who believes in harnessing customer and consumer data, uh, uh, customer insights, data analytics all those things to grow the business you know here here on this capability builder here the focus is to, is to demonstrate marketing's the marketing reach across the business you know uh, i don't know using tech uh powered capabilities to improve life cycle management of of customer experience so actually you can you can improve the business revenues, you know? So you build this capability and you understand the gaps that you have across the, the, the business and you fulfill this capability with tech or you fulfill this uh, um, with people, you know? A smart market obtains data and insights from the footprints the customers leave all over the digital daily lives, you know? And your ambition should be the connected dots between tech, data, and marketing to really bring this integrated view to the board, you know, or to the execs, that how you go from a customer experience perspective, opportunity perspective, and then the, the weak spots are, so you build there, okay? Number nine, a good marketer is an innovator. 
they don't suffer from the not invented here syndrome. You know, like the first thing that happens is here the word is experimentation. You know, uh, experimentation, new technology platforms, alternative media, new tools, techniques to create new offerings, new channels, and so forth. You know, you use data intelligence to advance the growth agenda. The worst thing a marketer can do is like the Professor Mark Ritson says this very correct, correctly. When you are a marketer for that product, you're not the consumer. Your opinion doesn't matter. You can have a hypothesis, but your opinion doesn't matter. And if you want to be an innovator, you've got to be able to use someone else's hypothesis and someone else's data and consumer data, you know? Uh, second last, uh, a good marketer is listening to consumers, you know, insights, the being this Sherlock Holmes, investigating for wishes of the, of the customers before these wishes becomes a want. Because if it becomes a want, that's the difference, you know, guys? That's actually the difference of innovation, innovative companies, you know? Once the wishes from customers or prospects becomes wants, you know who, who grows? The number one, the leader of the category. They are the ones who grow. And if you're not the number one in any category, if you're not the number one in selling cars, if you're not the number one in banking, if you're not the number one in chocolate, if you do not understand wishes, if just waiting for the ones, you're not going to take the number one position. Simple like that. And that's fine. If, you're, if your decision, strategic proposition should be number two, number three, that's okay. But it's understanding, it's being this Sherlock Holmes, this advocate of customers who understands data, it's our investigating and understand wishes a bit before they become ones. And the number 11, it's probably the most obvious and the most important, is mentality of growth. You know, it, 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 a good marketer, a modern marketer, a, a, a modern business marketer, it plays a role in creating and managing a plan to achieve, to achieve sustainable, um, profitable growth. You know, in 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 uh, in my time of agency, I always had this mentality of growth. I would always, I would always have two questions to my clients. Number one is, what's keeping you awake at night? And number two is, how is your business going to grow outside your department? So I, I was always thinking about the other departments, how to make friends with the, with the, the sales team, with the IT team, or other teams. How can we grow this thing here? Because fundamentally, that's the role of marketing. We are in the world, we have this profession about selling something. Sometimes it's a concept, sometimes it's a product, sometimes it's a chocolate. But if you don't have this mentality of growth, you're going to lose your job. No, probably not even get a job. And these are the 12, the 11, there was a 12 here that I decided to not place, but these are the 11 kind of skills that I see a modern marketer to collect and to be uh, uh, um, advancing your careers, my career, if you want to be a modern marketer. That's, that's pretty much. Mm -hmm. I have a video here that I'm going to leave behind so we can have more time for a couple of questions. This is a short summary about artificial intelligence applied to marketing. I'll leave this behind. We can, we, you, you, I'll send this back to all of you guys. These are some resources that I suggest that you read. The long and the short term, uh, brain, uh, how brains grow a book, a couple of short term courses free. And that's me, and I'm able to answer any questions you might have now, if you still have Good time. Good yeah. I think we'll show the artificial, artificial intelligence is where I'm doing all my research with my postgrads, and I think the students need to be across it. So I think what I'll do is I'll show that in another week, and then if they have questions about it, I'll email a group of questions to you to deal with it that way. Students, and I've got a few I might call out to ask you a question. Um, Lucio's got the track record. He's a really big thinker. You can hear he's got so many ideas. Um, oh, I just want, Terry, did you want to comment at all? Because we, Terry, who many of you know, he's doing the marking in this subject. 
He taught many of you in 737. Uh, we're just going to see whether he wanted to comment on the skills you guys need for good jobs. And it's going to be bloody hard in the pandemic for you guys to get jobs. You're going to have the toughest job getting a job for, what, 20 years. So what Lucio and Terry are telling you is maybe more important than the bloody exam. So, Terry, anything about the skills <laughs> needed for success you wanted to add to what Lucio talked about? I think students may disagree that it's more important than the exam because you actually <laughs> got to get through the subject first before we start thinking about this. However, it's I echo all the comments that uh, Lucio has made. So those skill sets, those broad skill sets that were discussed there, obviously apply to any marketing job. To what degree you have those skill sets depends on the particular job that you have. So, for example, I work at the National Australia Bank in database marketing. So my background is, um, is in econometrics and mathematics. So creating models. Now, I don't expect necessarily that every marketer uh, would go to that level of analytics, but it's good to have a knowledge of how these models work and how these models are created, et cetera, et cetera. So depending on where you go within marketing, and what the stage you are in your career, certain skills are more and more important. Once you get to be the director of the orchestra, you don't necessarily need to play any of the instruments. Typically, obviously, they do. You just need to know how all these instruments are coordinated. Mm -hmm. So it's a similar thing. But one of the key things that uh, you've got to remember, and Lucia mentioned a lot of these, is regardless of what level you are in the organisation, Having strong communication skills, mm. super important. The other thing is if you're working, well, even if you're not working for, for a corporate, political skills, and, and we're not talking about being a politician standing in front of a media conference. Oh, sorry, just to, find, just, to, just to find political skills for the overseas students because yeah, yeah. the word might be so, different so in I'm, Australia. Yeah, so that was, I was about to say that it's not uh, the politician, but within any organisation there is a, there's a structure, there is an underlying fabric that you need to understand and how you can interact with other people and how you can get your your ideas across. And sometimes just expressing your idea directly may not be the right approach and you might need to be able to influence people. So understanding, sometimes you'll hear the term office politics, understanding the office politics and who you might it sounds cutthroat, but who you might support and who you may not, um, and at what point you support them, at what point you remove that support, who you present your ideas to, how they might perceive those, that's critically important in order to be able to get your um, your money across. Yes, so we've got a comment here, politics are the hardest sometimes. From Emma? Uh, sometimes I change. Sorry? Uh, from there's, Emma. There's that people have yeah. Okay, so having political skills. Now, as I said before, adaption skills and technical skills, so being able to adapt to change in the organisation. I remember when I used to work for corporates, every couple of years there used to be a, a restructure of some sort. So you needed to adapt. You needed to adapt how the market uh, was changing in front of you. So there needed to be changes in the way that um, that you did your marketing. But, and uh, the other one is uh, business acumen. Lucia has already mentioned problem solving skills. All right, that's critically important as well. So simply following the process blindly and not necessarily thinking outside the box is not going to get you very far. All right, because there's plenty of others that can do exactly the same thing. Being able to see the core of a problem and being able to provide solutions which are outside the box are, uh, are very important. Understanding what the data is uh, actually means to you. So I'm teaching in another subject at the moment and uh, we're showing people how to use Excel spreadsheets and drawing data and making conclusions from Excel spreadsheets. And I'm amazed that in third year, some guys haven't even touched the spreadsheet. They've gone throughout their marketing course without even knowing how to use, and we're talking basic functions like adding and subtracting, using Excel. Now, it might sound strange, but sometimes if you don't do certain subjects, you don't necessarily get exposed to all these types of things. So it's important that you have um, data visualisation skills, problem solving skills, and as I said, technical skills are important as well. I don't want to take up too much time, Michael. I think I've said enough, but 
Mm -hmm. As I said, the, the general skills that Lucho has presented that all marketers should have to some degree um, are very important. Uh, students, you've heard two people that are both employed people, both worked at very big blue chip organisations. So I think you can trust their ideas and even if you play this back sometime. Now, specifically just questions for questions for Lucio. If there are any for Terry, email them to me and we'll post them in the cloud. But um, Emma, you got anything for Lucio? Or Jane, if she's there. Challenge him. He's a smart cookie. He's employed 50 people. Emma, uh, um, who's my other stars? Big growth mindset they reckon you've got. Yeah, yeah, good. A challenging speaker with a lot of success. I've, um, I've, 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 shared, I've shared already um, the deck here. On the, um, I put it as a shared file. Okay, I can also load it in the unit side if you want, but actually each week I email the whole 110 and I'll just put it as an attachment to that as well if you want. Yeah, I'll send to you uh, as well, Michael. It's uh, not a problem. I'll, 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 I'll share, I'll send you each to any more than welcome to share. I build this uh, um, on, on right now. So okay. I have a couple of questions here. So I'll, I'll start with Samantha. How have you overcome challenge of penis to get an online objective regarding a marketing campaign? Oh, great questions. All great questions. Great question. Okay. There is, it's a plague when you walk into a business and um, there is um, someone who sits there and say, oh, I'm not quite sure if we should do this campaign. And I'm talking campaign. If we should this campaign on that platform, because I don't think people use them. So usually my, 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 my question to that person is, who are the people you mentioned? Because historically, like science says that you cannot even hold more than 120 friends. But that's simple like that. You cannot. So you, you're, you're, if you are a super expert, your focus group is 120. Not even they don't even get close to them. But the best way, Samantha, is data. It's the best way. It's a very simple way. So I teach um, young um, undergrads in digital marketing at MIT. And I usually I ask them, uh, we, we do have, we do have, we do have, we do have some some classes where they say, oh, I don't want to use Facebook for this campaign. Facebook is a thing for old people. And I tell them, I say, okay, great, that's your opinion, fair enough. Can you show me some data that tells the old people? Like for example, for example, I just did a campaign four months ago, three months ago, I can't remember, three, four months ago with Mini, BMW, the car, using TikTok, all right? And um, the TikTok thing is this, is this like, oh, yeah, it's just young people. Yeah, absolutely, just young people creating content. But it's just, it's just about, it's less than 20% of the audience on TikTok in Australia, it's younger than 18 years old, which means 80%, they're already on the legal age to drive a car. If they're not driving a car today, they're going to be driving a car in a few years. And I, I sold electric car there. Because it's electric car, and we know the umbrella effect in marketing. I'm, I'm selling electric here, and, and people don't have the money to buy their, their car. They still buy second hands. So I still move in mini cars. You know what I mean? But the opinion would be, now nah, let's not do on TikTok because it's a young, it's just young people out there. Yeah, mostly young, mostly young creating the content. And then what I've done is I pretty much. The marketing director from Indy, we decided the whole campaign with three slides. One was the audience. Okay, so remember the, the tripod of marketing. Okay, segmentation, targeting, position. So one slide, one slide will have the, the data from the from the from TikTok platform, who they are, how long they stay, what they consume, and so forth. One slide. The second slide was our own segmentation targeting position for that platform. And third slide was our opportunity. 
So in marketing, we have this thing called share of voice. And share of voice in advertising on the category relates to your share of market. So let's say the whole automotive industry in Australia spends a million dollars a month in advertising. Whoever, is, if Toyota spends 20% of the advertising, the share of voice, they have likely 20% of share of market. They both are related. Okay? So whoever has more share of voice eventually, eventually has more share of market. Okay? So there's this thing called ESOV, excess share of voice. If I can extrapolate the share of voice of my competitors right now in media, I'm going to reap the effects this in the long run. So that was an opportunity for us and me and BMW to have an excess share of voice in electric and see ourselves as the leaders of that subcategory in a, in a platform where nobody was using. We had completely freedom. So there's a very strategic perspective of why you use that. But everything that I explained to you would be stopped, would not happen if I have heard someone say, it's just a young people's thing. Mm -hmm. So we have data to show them, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, Byron, how do you navigate the legal aspects of AI security of info? Well, we navigate this. Maybe link, maybe link that to his other question. Byron, come up with another one just below. Uh, I'm sorry. Two, two uh, at once. No, he's done two at once. Yeah, how do you protect your AI from competitors? Is there an equivalent of AI patent so that at least maintain advantage for period? Okay, so yeah, it's kind of like three questions. How do you navigate the legal aspects of AI? First one is you become best friends with the head of data, the head of IT and your lawyers. <laughs> That's how uh, you do it. Just become good friends with them and ask them to help you out on there. You, uh, it's no marketer uh, role to be necessarily solving the issues of security. But you need to have, listen to me, my dear friend Byron, you need to have understanding, literacy of at least what does it mean? ML, NLP, NLG, machine learning, natural language processing. You need to have literacy so you can have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with your legal teams and your corporate affairs and your uh, um, lawyers. So um, Byron's asking, how do you protect the competitors? Yes, there's equivalent of AI patent. Sort of, sort of it does. Funnily enough, where we are now in AI, on the journey of AI, perhaps this is another, another visit here, uh, Mark, another day about AI. Mm. We do another session just around there if you want in marketing. Mm. But the journey we are in AI now, algorithms are less valuable. What are more valuable is the data behind, you know? So, um, but you still can protect in the patents. Yes, you can do, and you can take advantage of uh, um, um, uh, private algorithms. Although legally, Byron, pay attention to this, Byron's very into AI, aren't you, Byron? <laughs> if, you, if you do something that you cannot, there's a thing in AI called explainable AI, and this is becoming kind of legislation, that you're going to need to be able to open a black box AI and explain how you make that decision. So if NEB, Commonwealth Bank, is using artificial intelligence to detect who they loan money or not, who they approve the loans or not, you're going to need to be able to explain how you make that decision. So eventually you need to open up the background of your AI. So um, I have another question. Assuming brand equity is also correlated to share of voice and share of marketing. I don't think this is a question. Um, can you rephrase your question? Brand equity? Ah, I understand now. Okay, great. Um, it's a very yes and no. Brand equity sits here, share of voice sits here, and share of market sits here. And then you plan the, the category dynamics. According to Professor Byron Sharp, we did a lot of research on how brands grow and all this sort of stuff. He says that the leader of a category, so you have a category, you have like every year, every year, we have more new people entering the category of cars. 
So let's say people completing uh, uh, 18 years old, now they're going to start buying cars. And according to the laws of the category, those who sell going to be selling more cars are those who have the leadership in the category. Okay? So if you never, if, you, if every year there are 1 million people buying chocolate, and next year you have 1.5 million people buying chocolate, probably the leader, in this case, let's say Cadbury, you're going to get the biggest share of wallet okay okay so that is a combination between share of voice product there's a whole of dynamics it's the four piece here and when you talk about share of voice we just talk about promotion so we cannot forget about the dynamics of pricing the dynamics of distribution the dynamics of uh, um, the product so if you talk about FNCG, for example, is a category that's driven by innovation. They need to have like a chocolate needs to launch, a, 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 a Cameron needs to launch at least five new flavors of chocolate every year. Cars, every year, cars, they go through a, trans, a mini transformation. You know what I mean? Because they need to look, they need to justify themselves. So brain equity, there are a lot of models that operate now that can put a, a economic a revenue amount based on equity. I also need to understand that now brand equity, it's intangible value. There are a lot of companies, Coca-Cola is worth more for their intangible values, for the brands and everything they mean, than actually by the manufacturing. It's crazy. Like Nike, Nike is a, it's a brand, it's a brand business, it's, it's a marketing business, it's an equity business, it's not really a manufacturing, you know? So the dynamics of equity, market share, share of marketing, they're all related. And um, Ash, Ashwini, is that how I, how I pronounce the name? Hope yeah, you, yeah. Hope I pronounced that correctly. I'll tell you, my friend, that's what a modern marketer does. Short-term doer, long-term thinker. Asking questions is exactly how you ask, my friend. Yeah, good. And Shwini does ask good questions to me each week. But look, if it's okay with you guys, and Terry, thanks for joining in too, what we'll do is any questions that we couldn't get to Lucio with, and he's so interesting on so many different areas. Um, I'm very zen in my life. I meditate every day. And Lucio tries to manage his body and life with minimalism and Zen. So we're sort of spiritual soulmates, I just discovered. Um, so he's an incredible guy, and I'm so lucky to have him. But I'm thinking, if you've got questions on his life, uh, marketing, AI, how about email them, and I'll email some to, to, to him, and I'll post the answers in the cloud. Um, let's do that, students. But I think Lucio... Um, that's great. I'm not just being polite. I think it was really dynamic and good and cutting edge. So I'll chase you up separately about business opportunities and things. But at the moment, I think we're all happy. The students will email me if there's a query and I'll send a list of questions to you. Is that okay? Perfect. Absolutely. Thank you very much, uh, Terry. Thanks, uh, Michael. The students, it was, uh, it was a pleasure to be around yeah, with you guys. And I uh, wish you all the best. Wish you all all the greatness. Yeah, thank you. And remember, remember one last thing. Uh, one last thing, Michael. Guys, you only will get one shot today, right? See what feels when someone asks you what you do uh, uh, to better yourself yesterday. What do you want to say? To better yourself from yesterday. When, when, when someone asks you, what did you do to better yourself from yeah. yesterday, what do you want to answer? Yes. You're a better version of yourselves every single day, whatever that means to you, mentally, spiritually, professionally, okay? Be in peace. All the best. Thank you yeah. very much, Michael. Good to see you, Terry. I loved you. You can see the long comments there. Thanks very much, Lucio. I'll email you in yeah. a couple of days. Okay. Bye -bye. Now, students. Come back at five past six and we'll have a talk. I'm just going to get a glass of water. And thanks, Terry. That went well. Right, right, well I'll drop off now. So the next time I'll see everyone is is our speaker coming back for the assignment? Yeah, that's, back? 